の日本語ポッドキャストが本当に日曜日に。What's going on, everyone? It's Justin here, and we've landed here in Tokyo. I'm super excited to be back for the first time since 2019, and we're here for the Fujifilm X Summit. We're going to be seeing everything about the brand new Fuji X100 VI. In this video, I'm going to show you guys some of the sample photos that I took, the video recording, and I mean, the specs are incredible 40 megapixels, 6K video recording, and 10 bit 422 F log, as well as in body stabilization, AI autofocus, and I mean, being a camera that I've used for quite a few years as my daily camera and one that I brought on travel, it is really nice to see this next generation of tech. and I mean, we're in the best place to do it. I'm super excited to be here, so without further ado, let's go. So, some of the photos that I've really enjoyed taking has been down the alleys. And as you go all around Japan, there are so many alleys with amazing food, 7 Elevens, vending machines, and just so much detail, color, and depth. And with a 40 megapixel sensor, I'm able to crop in on the image and reframe it accordingly. But at the same time, the dynamic range is really tested in these scenarios, specifically because of the bright skies and the dark alleys. So we've been really trying to highlight the versatility of the X106 during this trip. And just having a digital camera at this size and with this feature set is so amazing to combine with our cinematic film as well through the video clips that we've captured on the Fujifilm XT5. Biggest changes to the Fujifilm X106 is the 40 megapixel sensor. Even though the megapixels aren't everything when it comes to cameras, in this particular scenario, being a fixed lens compact digital camera, it is really handy for reframing. Cropping and being able to reuse your photos in as many ways as possible. Obviously, the fixed focal length at its full resolution is a really optimal street photography length, and we're in the best place in the world to do that. But yeah, the best part about it is knowing that within my pocket, I have 40 megapixels to work with, and being able to crop in and fix all these different details has been a lot of fun. So, with all this being said, I think the best part about this camera is that it retains the same form factor and amazing design that the previous generations have. Even though there's so much tech that has been added, a lot of times there are different changes that have to be made to be able to fit that level of hardware into the compact body. And with this, it is literally identical. You take a look at it from the outside, and it's still available in the beautiful black as well as the silver, but it is still the same amazing form factor and classic design that makes the X100 line so special. 20 film simulations is awesome. Being able to pick between all these different styles is still the best part about this camera, but having the modern day tech, the high megapixel count, the IBIS, the AI features, and everything is what sums up this whole experience in the digital compact body. It really is a competitive camera in the market and one that is going to be a very strong option for many years because it has been about four years, I believe, since the X100V came out. And with this, it has just been such an amazing few days with the camera. So now it's time for us to get some nighttime samples on this camera and some of the key features in this newest generation that contribute to better low light performance include the six stops of in body image stabilization as well as the AI autofocus. So, one of the biggest things that I noticed about using this camera is how good the autofocus is. This is a combination of hardware, software, AI, and everything coming together to be able to deliver that amazing experience. And some of those categories broken down include the in body image stabilization being at six stops, as well as the newest generation processor and the AI algorithm. It has a really good ability to predict the subject and do great subject tracking. And I've really experienced that when trying to do street photography, whenever we're just like pointing to something and maybe readjusting the frame, it will then follow along with it in specific modes. And so that is the biggest thing that I noticed with this camera specifically is just how good the autofocus is. And I think, especially for a run and gun camera, 
camera. One of the biggest drawbacks of the previous generation is that the subject detection autofocus was just not as good as it could have been. The hybrid EVF has also been really fun to use. I'm not usually someone who likes to use the, AV the EVF primarily. I use the LCD screen that is built into the back, but with this, it lets you take advantage of both of them. You can look through the viewfinder and get a live optical view and being able to reframe your subject and everything, but at the same time, being able to see all of the electronic guides and everything and switch between those has made it very handy. And like that filmic fun look that you get out of this camera, it all comes together so nicely. And the only complaint that I would have in terms of video is the fact that it is a little bit harder to switch to the video mode. You have to go into the drive settings instead of having a dedicated button, but it really is a camera that is not video first. And so the fact that it is able to check all of those boxes from a video standpoint is what makes it so good. So now it's time to wrap up my experience with the Fujifilm X100 6. And I've been in Tokyo for a few days now. We're wrapping up our trip here and the weather has been interesting. We've had sunny days, we've also had rainy days, and it's been a very versatile scenario to test this camera whether it's tracking subjects or just capturing a nice shot of some food you can take a look at all the samples captured during this trip and i will say that this camera is really impressive it does have a 200 dollars price bump from the previous generation but i did expect that and considering the price that the previous generation is going for in the secondary market i mean the features that you get out of this are impressive and if you just pick one or two of them you can almost justify the cost of buying this camera and also upgrading to it from the previous generation on its own. Whether that is the video, whether that is the higher megapixel count that allows you to crop in, whether that is the in-body image stabilization or the autofocus, all this really comes together in making it a camera that has very few flaws overall. I really, really enjoyed the previous gen. There were definitely some features that I feel like could have been done better on it, but for what it was and the purpose that it was trying to serve in the market that it was in, it was my go-to choice for quite a while. And I mean, with all of the great technical abilities and the raw image you're able to get, having 20 film simulations is where you can really have your creative element to it and pick different types of themes, colors, and looks for your style that can often change over time. So I've now been back from Japan for a month and I've had the opportunity to take a look at all the photos that I've captured throughout these trips and share with you what my experience is with this camera and from looking at the raw images, how it differs from the previous generation and whether it is worth updating. I already had an incredible time in Japan and bringing this camera around over the months and it really is exciting to replace something in your bag that you've already been using for so many years with the newer generation, especially with all of the hype around it and how it had already lived up to my perspected expectations before I even received a unit in hand. And from looking at the raw images, I mean, being able to crop out the images is a technical improvement. It isn't just like a preferential thing, but simply when you go ahead and crop and reframe the images, having 40 megapixels to work with is incredible. But there is so much more than that. Not only are the colors and everything really fun to work with, but even having experience with all of the film emulations and the presets that have been built in by Fujifilm and also testing out Riala Ace for the first time, it really does give you a different characteristic throughout all different types of edit. Personally, I've been going through Classic Chrome mostly and I've kind of stuck to Classic Chrome, but I also gave the chance to try out Riala Ace. And I would say Riala Ace is, hence its name, a really soft and friendly emulation that is really representative of the original image without altering it too much, but it doesn't have a high level of contrast or punch that you might get out of classic Chrome. And so it comes down to the look that you're going for, but what's great is that so many people can capture an image and edit it in different ways, while also having an ecosystem and community where people can share their recipes and you can also download some online to match a look that you may have seen that someone may have shared as well. I think that's what makes the Fuji film lineup specifically so unique is the cool community around that. Some of the other observations that I also noticed when I was editing the photos is that it is a lot better when it comes to low light images. That is thanks to the six stops of in-body image stabilization because a lot of times I might have captured an image in a lower light scenario and it might have looked good on like the tiny screen but when I went to go ahead and put it into my computer I noticed there was quite a bit of motion blur and the image just wasn't quite in focus and I may not have held the camera still enough. 
A lot of times, even in lower light situations where I didn't think the lighting was adequate enough to get a good image, when the image exported out, it just had such a natural and beautiful look to it. And with a little bit of grain added, the image just turned out a lot better than I expected once I went ahead and posted it. Now down to the conclusion. Should you go ahead and buy this camera if you're coming from the previous generation? And I would say absolutely. If you can get on the wait list and are willing to wait a little bit, the previous generation is still selling for very close to the original retail price. And with the features of the higher megapixel count, being able to crop in your images is great. Having the six stops of stabilization is also great, but if you use the video functions as well, it is an absolute no-brainer. The reason why I always brought around my Fujifilm X105 is because I would bring it around, capture some images, import it to my smartphone, and upload the photos as JPEGs straight to Instagram as Instagram stories on site, because oftentimes we don't have time to edit and have to post it on site for like a brand campaign, and that can make a big difference. But being able to trust the JPEG image as well as knowing it had the latitude to work with the raw in post and also just trusting that with the combination of the higher megapixel count and the in-body stabilization that I'm going to be able to nail the image just from whipping it out, setting it up, having it in the aperture priority and ready to go has been a game changer. And that's why I absolutely love this camera. But back to Japan to wrap up this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is going to be in my camera bag for so many years to come. So a huge thanks to Fujifilm for having me out in Tokyo. And if you enjoyed this video, drop a like. Let me know if you have any comments and I'll see you all in the next video.